I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. This occurred on the Olympic Peninsula in Clallam County, Washington, in September 1971. I've been holding this back for a long time, and I think it's finally time to share it. And by the way, I know what I saw on that misty morning so many years ago was absolutely alive and real. I was 23 years old, and I owned my own taxidermy business and hunting safari company, so you can see I knew something about animals. I was on a bear hunt with a friend of mine who lived in Clallam Bay. We had our own pack of trained bear hounds and had plenty of experience in the bush. We were out on the Olympic Peninsula, as I recall, either in or right next to the National Park. We had eight dogs with us that morning and were in the hunting area at first light. Our lead scent dog had just picked up a red-hot bear track, so we let the rest of the pack go and off they went, baying and barking like crazy. Well, we followed those hounds for about three hours, and finally, that big old bear took us to an extremely dense piece of old-growth forest, the likes of which neither myself nor my 40-year-old friend had ever been in. It was dark, dank, and dangerous in there because of all the deadfalls and holes beneath the moss. The dogs followed this damn bear down an enormously deep chasm about 30 yards wide, but at least a mile or more straight down, all choked up with snags of old growth and pines. We could hear a river running down at the bottom of it, and we were both afraid we were going to lose the dogs once they got out of earshot down that entrance to hell. We decided finally that my friend would go down after the dogs, and I would stand guard at the top and about 20 yards back in the rim, just in case the bear came back out my way. Here's the part you've been waiting for. I caught sight of a movement at the edge of the canyon. At first, of course, I thought it was my friend, then I thought it must be the bear, but then I got the absolute fright of my life. What I saw was no more than 20 yards from me. It was an enormous blackish-brown, soaking wet, stinking, hominid-type creature, like something out of your worst nightmare. I immediately brought my rifle up to my shoulder, ready to defend myself if need be. I am within smelling distance of this thing. The creature climbed up out of the fog-shrouded crevice and just stood staring back down into it. Then it sat down for about ten minutes or so, and all this time it hadn't seen me yet. Suddenly, it slowly turned its whole body halfway around and stared right straight at me. Rifle pointed at him and all. In my mind, I had decided that if he came to me, I would shoot him in the head as he looked too big at that distance to try and stop with a body shot. I was holding a 44 mag short-barreled rifle loaded with 240 grain hollow points, and I still didn't feel I could stop this hulking beast unless it was a brain shot, and I knew I would only have one chance if I had to. Suddenly, the brute jumped to its enormous feet, plunged back over the side of the embankment, much to my enormous relief, and disappeared back down into the abyss. I stood there shaking a bit, still aiming my rifle at the spot where he dropped over the side, until I was too weak to stand any longer. He was so enormous and frightening looking that I never ever could forget an impression he left on me until this very day. He looked like a 10-foot, 800-pound ape with a head that was too small for its body. I could smell his urine and sweat musk for an hour after he was gone. In fact, I can still remember it even today, years later, as I'm writing this to you. The rest of the story pales in comparison to this, so I'll just say that I never saw the dogs again, but I did shoot a big bear about four hours later as it barreled out of the ravine just ahead of my buddy. This happened in October 1971 in Granite Falls in Washington, right off the main street going through town. It was like a boarding house with rooms to rent, as I remember. I was with my sister and her friend. It was nighttime around 9.30. When we arrived at the friend's house in Granite Falls, we all went inside, and at that time I remember I left my smokes on the dashboard of the car, so I went back out to get them. As I approached the car, I got an eerie feeling that something was watching me, so I turned around to look, and there, across the road from me, was a tall, hairy creature looking at me. I was so scared, I could not move at first, but then I ran back into the house and told them what I saw. No one would go out to look, they were too scared. I know what I saw, and it wasn't a bear or a person playing a joke. It was around eight to nine feet tall and very large. I couldn't see its face because it was too dark, and there was only one light from a house down the road where it became forest. The next day I looked where I saw it, but I didn't see prints. 
I think it could have been standing on the road. The only people I told was my sister and her friend, and they were in the house. The light was poor, and it was a rainy day, but it was not rainy at the time, but it was wet out. It was on a side road with only a few houses on it, and the road dead-ended at the forest. This was near Yakult in Skamania County on May 22, 1972, on the road over the top of Silver Star Mountain. It was foggy, and we had never been on this road before, so we had stopped the pickup and got out to check the road ahead on foot. As we were walking south on the road, we heard rocks tumbling down from above us. We decided to return to the truck and turn around and not risk going any further. As we were walking back to the truck, I noticed footprints going uphill from the road in the area we had walked from not more than 10 minutes before. I wear a size 12D boot, and I was able to put my whole boot inside this freshly made footprint. We all got scared and ran the rest of the way back to the truck. As I was turning the truck around, I was looking over my shoulder out the window, and I noticed a large, dark, hairy animal walking upright about 50 feet behind us. It looked right at us and kept going. We left the area immediately. Cop pulls gun on Bigfoot. Rabin County, Georgia, May 23, 1998. I had taken my first trip to the North Georgia mountains, specifically the Tallulah Gorge area. After hiking to the bottom of the gorge, I hiked to another local area near a lake called Lake Reuben, and I viewed some waterfalls called Minnehaha Falls. The sun was already setting, and when I completed the fairly easy stroll to the falls, I noticed that I was the only person at the falls. I did not observe anything weird at the time, but I did catch a whiff of something smelly in the area. Not quite the smell of a dead animal, but the smell of something very musty and almost sweaty. I stayed until it was completely dark, and I fished my flashlight out of my backpack. As I finished my ham sandwich, I began to get up off the ground to hike out. It was at this time I noticed a figure of what I thought was a person squatting to the right of the falls in some bushes. I thought it was another hiker I had either failed to see sitting there or someone who had arrived after me. I did not turn my light on yet, and I did not want to turn it on so as to blind the other person. I began to walk in the direction of the other person to say hello, and that is when it stood up, and I could obviously tell this thing was about 9 to 10 feet tall. I still thought it was a very tall person until I got to within 20 feet of it and the smell became extremely bad. I could hear the thing breathing shallow and it kind of sounded like when a person has a chest cold with some gurgling or rattling in the chest. I stopped and turned my light on and tried to shine it on the thing, but it began to turn away from me as it took very long strides as it walked on two legs. It was dark brown in color and had matted hair covering its body. It stopped and turned towards me from about 60 feet away and took about five to six steps toward me in the bushes. I became scared and drew my service pistol from my fanny sack. I am a police officer and stood my ground while yelling at it to stop. It stopped and then turned away. The creature walked away without turning back. I left the area and drove back to my apartment in Marietta, Georgia. I did not tell anyone about this as I thought they would think I was crazy or lying. Skateboarders hear and see Screaming Bigfoot, September 1993, Clatsop County, Oregon. Some friends and I went camping for the weekend at a KOA campground near Fort Stevens, Oregon. In the late afternoon on the second day we were there, a group of five or six of us decided to skateboard on the bike trails between the campground and the fort. We went to the fort, walked around and looked, stayed for maybe an hour and decided to head back to the campground. On the way back, I and another skated about 40 or 50 paces ahead of the others when we noticed they had stopped. We got off our boards and walked ahead so the others could catch up with us. We walked around a blind corner on the trail when we heard what sounded like a high-pitched scream. My friend said, that sounds like a kid. So we ran down the trail, assuming someone was hurt. While we were running, we heard a series of grunts, very low and very close. They sounded almost like a hog, only longer and much louder and lower pitched. We stopped running and I put my hands on my knees and crouched down, looking off the trail all around us to see where the sounds were coming from. Then I saw an animal about five feet off the trail in the brush, approximately ten yards away from us in the direction we had come from. We had run right past it. It was very hairy and black 
and at first glance I thought it was a black bear, which I have seen before, but when it stood up and I realized it was crouching. The guy I was with was six foot two, and it was a little taller than him. It swung around and began to run away from the trail into the brush. It ran like a man, much too agile to be a bear, and completely upright, swinging its arms in front of it as it ran to move the heavy brush out of its way. It didn't lumber side to side like a bear does when it stands on its hind legs. I remember being amazed after the incident that it could move so fast. Its speed was really amazing. It took about five very big strides into the brush, and we couldn't see it anymore. We could hear it running through the brush, though. There were a lot of sticks and deadfall in the ground, and the underbrush was pretty thick, so it made a hell of a lot of noise. The sound didn't get very far away from us, and then it just stopped. We ran up to where it had been crouched next to the trail, and stared into the brush for a couple of minutes, but we saw and heard nothing else. Then we got scared, we started running back to where the rest of the party was. The rest of the party laughed at us when we told them the story, so all of us had just stopped where we had seen the animal. We looked for tracks or broken undergrowth, but there was so much dead brush on the ground we couldn't even tell where the thing had been crouched in the first place. To this day, I remember what the animal looked like, though. It was between six and seven feet tall, and had it been a man, I would have called its weight at about 270 pounds. Not great big, but still pretty big. It definitely stood upright like a bipedal animal, and it had pretty long arms with elbow joints. Its legs didn't look all that long, but it had knees and it ran like a man, but extremely fast. It had black hair which was pretty long. Its back was darker colored than its front. It was late afternoon in early September, the sun was on it, and it was real close to us, so I got a pretty good look at it, however briefly. I can't stress enough how amazingly fast this thing was. No way it could have been a bear. Two Young Men Confronted by Large Creature November 1976, Sampson County, North Carolina It was a sunny but cool Saturday in November 1976. I was home for the weekend from college when my cousin Don and I decided to do a little squirrel hunting. Don had a 12-gauge shotgun and I had a 22-gauge rifle. I had seen a fair amount of squirrel activity around while fishing at the nearby farm pond and thought we would make this a fruitful trip. This is rural America, with the nearest town of 1,000 just 15 miles away. It is also a farming community with large fields dotting the countryside and woods separating the fields. The area we plan to hunt is made up of mostly hardwood trees with cypress trees down near the river that flowed through the property. We walked about a mile and a half into the woods until we came over a ridge and started down towards the river, which was about 75 yards away, all the while looking up in the treetops for squirrel sign. I looked down to ensure my footing when I caught a glimpse of something off to my right between me and the river. Coming up from the river bottom was a huge dark mass. I froze in my tracks and my cousin bumped into the back of me. I could feel the barrel of the 12 gauge across the small of my back. Don looked around me and said, what is it? I couldn't speak. The mass continued in our direction, taking long strides and ignoring the small trees, brush and briars in its path as if they were not there. It stopped about 30 feet from us. It looked upset that we happened to intrude in its space. I could clearly see its face, body, feet, and hands. It had dark brown hair that was longer on its head and arms than the legs, chest, and stomach. Very short hair on its face, and the skin shone through. The hair was darker the closer to the body it was. It looked to be about 9 to 10 feet tall, with a very heavy muscular structure and weighing about 800 pounds. I'm six foot one and was about four feet higher up on the ridge, yet could almost look eye to eye with this creature. It then grabbed a dead old hardwood tree still upright, which was about six inches in diameter in its right hand, with its left hand placed on a larger oak about 20 inches in diameter. As it looked at us with yellowish looking bloodshot eyes, it snapped the old dead oak off at the ground and made a loud grunting bark. I could see its teeth with the canines a little longer than our own, but not pronounced like a bear or dog's. I could even see vapor from its breath. I don't think it could see mine because I was not breathing. I didn't smell anything and didn't expect to, as it was downwind. I could feel the 12 gauges barrel getting pushed further into the small of my back as Cousin Don was positioning himself with me directly between him and the creature. 
It seemed aggressive at first, but it did not get any closer than 30 feet. Like it wanted to send a message, which my cousin and I read loud and clear. We were not invited, so get the heck out of there. I was now ready for a hasty retreat as my legs started to finally move and the brain cramp I experienced seemed to lessen. As I turned around to leave, Dawn and I kind of got crossed up. We scrambled back over the ridge and ran for at least a quarter mile before we stopped. Dawn was hysterical. For a guy with a back as wide as a house, the screaming and tears just did not fit. I was trying to calm him down, at the same time trying to understand what we had seen. As we both calmed down and weak-legged from just running the 440, along with the loss of adrenaline, we kind of just fell on our backsides. After a few choice words between two teenagers, we came to the conclusion that it was probably just a bootlegger in a gorilla suit. That was just a show to mind us to stay away from some hidden moonshine still. Why we didn't shoot it was also discussed, because we both agreed that it didn't seem right. We are experienced hunters, and you just don't shoot to be shooting. And as far as we knew, this thing was not in season. It also looked too human. I looked into the Bigfoot phenomena by purchasing the book Bigfoot by Anne Slate and Alan Berry. The accounts described by Alan gave me solace that I was not alone. Others were experiencing the same encounters. My conclusion still shifted back to the Moonshiner theory, even as I felt the gorilla costume seemed to fit the Moonshiner too well. So that's the story we told our relatives. Even though it never seemed right or fit the experience, that's the way I saw it. I left the area to go back to college after that, never really returning. My brother built a house not 300 yards from where we had the encounter, and I planned to visit the spot from time to time. I guess in one way to hope for a chance encounter, and in another way to relive the one I had. Man, what a rush. After the demise of Ray Wallace, I felt I should tell this story now. Also, in hope that others in rural eastern North Carolina that might have experienced a similar story may want to tell theirs. A few years before, seven of us were spending the night in an abandoned house two miles away. It was a full moon and light was shining in the room. Around midnight, the room went dark and we could see the shadow of a person blocking out the light from the moon. It scared us to death because that window was eight feet off the ground to the bottom of it. I checked the next day and could not jump up to look in. We just thought it was the boogeyman. Bigfoot sighting causes witnesses' noses to bleed. April 5, 2008, Grays Harbor County, Washington. My boyfriend, E.P., and I were with our good friend, D.I., who was driving an F-150 pickup truck. We had gone up onto the logging roads for the boys to teach me how to shoot a shotgun better. It was very desolate and has very thick forests. We went in near the Alma, Satsop, Washington area and drove for hours. We ended up getting lost, but knew the A and B line roads, which we were on from what the Garmin told us, came out somewhere near Capitol Forest. By this time, it was pretty late and we were ready to go home. We ended up turning around somewhere in between and found ourselves going around a corner with a hill coming down on the left-hand side that had lots of tall pine trees and low-lying brush and stumps. The next few moments all kind of fade together, so I will try to type them out as clear as possible without the cursing involved. I was sitting in the middle seat, and I saw a flash of huge eyes first in the headlights. By this time, I had said, holy bleep, look at that, and D.I. had stopped the truck and opened his door and gotten out, because whatever it was, was at about a 35-degree angle on the left side, not even a 100 yards away from us, and my boyfriend sitting on my right had no clue what was going on. Let me just say that both boys I was with have done lots of hunting and are familiar with animals' reactions and their sizes, eye shape, etc. I'm still sitting in the middle of the seat, and my boyfriend has gotten out now, too, and I'm frozen in fear. I feel like five minutes go by that I'm staring into the largest greenish glowing eyes I have ever seen. It felt like time literally stopped. D.I. with his door open to my left is so shooken up that he can't even get the bullet into the shotgun or even hold it. All of a sudden, my boyfriend said I started shrieking and screaming and I felt like I was snapped out of a trance and I saw its outline. What sticks out the most besides the eyes was huge forearms that it seemed to be propping itself up on. I didn't notice color. It was at least 700 to 750 pounds. I kept screaming and now crying. 
I never even knew I was, and both boys jumped back into the truck. My boyfriend was still wondering what D.I. and I had both saw. My nose started gushing blood, the first nosebleed I've had in many years, and I don't know if it was from the absolute terror of the moment. The thing didn't move the whole time, which is so strange even for a bear or elk in the headlights. We drove off, and it ran up the hillside that was slanted up to the left. The next hour in the truck was so weird, and D.I. didn't want to talk at all about it. All he would say over and over was, that was huge, the eyes, huge. We all wanted to get the hell out of the woods. The next day he came over. He said one really weird thing was he woke up with a nosebleed, and he hadn't had one in many years, too. We talked more about it, and it kept getting more strange to him. He's the type of person who talks himself out of things like this to not seem like a pussy. I'm not the type of girl that gets scared easily. I never scream or cry. I have grown up camping and backpacking in the woods and have seen many animals. Never in my whole life have I experienced something so strange, shocking, and terrifying all at the same time. This happened a couple of days ago, and I still cannot sleep a whole night through without thinking about it. June, 1991 Fresno County, California. My story occurred around 1991 on the San Joaquin River in what would be the northwestern part of town, actually in Fresno. The area is mostly farmland and some sparse woods and vineyards, nothing like foresty though. Myself, my cousin, and a friend had decided to go late night fishing at a little area on the river where the river sort of pools. There's a bridge there. It was late and we were sitting there and fishing when we heard something making noise and looked back and saw a coyote running across the bridge heading north. The coyote kept looking back as it ran, as if it was frightened. The coyote looked at us, but it was clearly focused on something behind it, and it was scared. We thought at that time that this was odd. We then heard what we thought was a splash, as if someone had dove into the water behind us. It was dark, so we just glanced back, but of course saw nothing. We probably sat for about 10 minutes or so when suddenly there was a huge gush and splash about 25 yards away in front of us. We stopped fishing and then tried looking into the darkness. This small boulder throwing continued at least two more times before we actually saw a dark figure about 40 yards away standing what looked about waist high in the water. There was a full moon so it wasn't too dark to see that it was a pretty big creature. By this time, we were starting to get scared and were pretty much frozen place and had begun to yell at it, thinking that it could be a person. This prompted my friend to yell threats of violence, as young people are sometimes prone to do. This creature basically turned its whole body to the right of it and grabbed another boulder and with both hands over its head threw it at us. This one landed about 15 yards away. It made no sound or noise, only threw small boulders. It threw two more boulders, the last landing about five yards from us, enough to splash water on our faces. By this time, we had reeled in our lines and were trying to get out of there as fast as we could. We ran all the way back to the car, which was through some trees, across a field, and up a hill. We went back the next day to the area, and on rafts floated to the area where the creature had stood. My friend is about six foot tall and jumped in the water to see about how deep it was. The water came to his shoulders. There was no way this was a man. We even saw some of the boulders that had been thrown at the bottom of the water, as it wasn't more than five and a half feet deep. There was a sandbar, and the boulders were at least 30 to 40 pounds. Following a long phone interview with the witness on July 10, 2005, these important details should be added to this report. At the time of the incident, the witnesses, ages 17 to 21, were fishing for catfish during a full moon under the north side of a bridge, about 14 miles west of where Highway 99 meets the San Joaquin River. This area is in close proximity to several small to large sloughs and a wildlife refuge, which contains an abundance of fish, waterfowl, small mammals, and reptiles. The observed coyote's frightened and strange behavior reminded the witness of a previously viewed program that discussed and showed visual examples of animals' flight instinct from other predators. In response to the three young adults shouting and yelling, the large dark figure was seen pivoting to its right and picked up what appeared to be large boulders from the sandbank directly behind it and began tossing them hands over head in the witness's direction. 
The witness believes the subject's increased hostility was a direct result of being shouted at. At no time did the subject respond vocally or attempt to shorten its distance from the witnesses. Although no facial features were observed during the encounter, the witness emphasized both the large size and broad stature of the subject. In addition, the witness perceived the figure to be hair-covered due to both its dark color and what appeared to be shiny, wet fur slightly animated by moonlight. While departing, the witnesses felt extreme fear and anxiety. The witness was insistent that he and his two companions experienced several tense moments while trying to reach their car. They were literally climbing over each other while having to negotiate a narrow single-file path in the back end of a vineyard before reaching a clearing. The next day, the witness took both his six-foot-two friend and future wife rafting to the spot where the subject was observed waist-deep in water. The alleged creature appeared to have waited where the river narrowed on a corner in five-and-a-half-foot-deep water. This particular pool of water reached the bottom chin of the six-foot-two friend. After seeing this comparison, the witness estimated that the subject witnessed the previous night reached a height of between eight-and-a-half and nine feet. Several clean boulders weighing in excess of 30 pounds were found laying on the river bottom where the witness saw the huge splashes the night before. April 2003, Humboldt County, California. Well, it's been a couple of years since it happened, but here goes. I was stationed at Beale AFB, California, and I would always drive around looking for the next great fishing hole. I'd been driving for quite some time and decided to pull into Humboldt Redwood State Park. Being from Alabama, I figured seeing these big redwoods would be kind of cool. So, I got off Highway 101 and took the Avenue of the Giants exit. Driving down the road, I was amazed at the size of the trees, so they kind of grabbed my attention. I started seeing a lot of places where I was thinking I could fish, so I started to slow down even more to find a place to park. As I kept driving, the river kind of started getting a little further away, and I was about to turn around. When out of nowhere, something walked across the road, and to say the least, it shocked the you-know-what out of me. The reason why it got me a little jumpy was because of the fact that I had to have come within a couple of feet of this thing. Now, I'm a pretty big guy, six feet and about 220, but whatever walked in front of my truck had to have been over seven feet tall, due to the height of the truck, a Chevy Z71. Now, when it comes to the poundage of this thing, I would have to say it was well over 350 pounds. As far as physical features, all I saw was the back and arm swing. The thing never turned around for me to get a better look at it, but it had a large back and rather long arms. As far as the neck goes, it didn't really have one. The animal's traps made it look like it didn't have a neck, kind of like me. But after I did find a place to turn around, I went back to look around. Dumb, I know, to say the least. I only found a couple of tracks. They had to have been 14 to 15 inches long, Plus, the stride of this thing was a lot longer than mine. Just to make the stride this thing did, I had to make one heck of an effort. Now, all I can say is whatever I saw that day was nothing like anything I have ever seen in the woods before, and I grew up in the outdoors. I had another event, and this one was a lot different, but still happened with me fishing, and this one kind of shook me up. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Richard Hucklebridge. On January 21, 2005, I called S.Y. in Nevada, and we went over his first encounter along Highway 101 in Northern California on a weekend in April 2003. Late 2003, S.Y. turned in two reports to the BFRO, but due to military duties, he left for the Far East before we could talk. This is the first of his two reports, and he resubmitted this one in January 2005. His second report was in the same area, but it occurred in May of 2003. S.Y. had a very short visual encounter with an unknown creature as it crossed the road in front of his pickup truck, and he could only see it from the waist up. The only parts of this creature he could see was its coned head, its backside down to the waist, and one arm during his very brief encounter. He first thought it might have been a person, but he knew it wasn't a bear. The creature was moving across that highway at what he thought was a fast clip as it headed for the Eel River. The witness almost hit it with his truck and stated that he was looking for a place to fish, which is why he was only driving about 35 miles per hour. When he looked back onto the road in front of his truck, 
he noticed this creature moving across in front of him and then quickly disappeared into the foliage on the river side of the road. Note, he almost hit this creature. He, S.Y., did go back and located several footprints on the river side of the road. He used his 11 and a half size boots as a measuring instrument, and one of the prints with visible toes was 3 to 4 inches longer than his boot and about 2 to 3 inches wider. S.Y. said the creature might have been running because of the length of its stride, but couldn't be for sure because of the total time of the sighting, which was about 3 to 4 seconds at most. The witness described the creature's color as gray to dark black. The approximate height and weight were stated in his report. But S.Y. said that after he returned from this trip, he had a friend who is 6 foot 7 inches tall and weighs over 266 pounds stand in front of his truck, and he was not even close to the size and weight of this creature. The creature never looked back at him, so no facial descriptions. The word traps that was used in the report was meant to describe the trapezius muscles between its ears and its shoulders, and their size was why there was no visible sign of a neck. S.Y. said he noticed the arm length was longer and much better muscled than a normal person would have been. The creature's biceps had to be well over 20 inches around, and this was noticed because S.Y. is into bodybuilding and powerlifting. After talking with S.Y., I am convinced that he had a short encounter with a Sasquatch because of his descriptions of the creature and now his apprehensive demeanor as he goes over the retelling of his first sighting. Note, S.Y. has had a total of two sightings. The reason that apprehensive was used is the fact that S.Y. is not real sure that anybody out there really believes him because of how his family and friends have acted after they have heard those stories. He's not too happy about this situation because he knows what he saw and it was real. He still thinks about these sightings every day and he now has a need to prove to his friends and wife that they are real. Note, S.Y. did not have a camera with him during this first sighting. This is S.Y.'s second encounter. It happened only a month after his first sighting in May 2003. Well, this was just supposed to be a fishing trip to see what the area had to offer. I had been coming to this area for the past couple of months and started to learn it a little better. So I decided to go exploring for some fishing holes. All I had with me at the time was a fishing rod and a GPS receiver so I wouldn't get lost. I parked the truck and started out on foot. I had talked to two local fishermen about what was in these rivers and what to use. I'm from the south, and this area was like a new world. So I made my way down to the river along the side of the bank. At times the going got a little hard, but I managed. I tried several places, but the water was moving too fast, so I thought that I would try and find a slack part of the river, where the flow was a little slower. Now these woods are a lot different than the ones I was used to, so I was a little excited about this new area. I had been walking for maybe 45 minutes and covered maybe two miles when I saw something in the distance. At first I thought that it was just a stump, seeing that I had left my glasses in the truck. Now my vision isn't that bad, but I still need them for driving. But I started feeling a little uneasy due to an earlier encounter, plus it might have been a bear. But being the idiot that I am, I had to get closer. I got to within about 75 yards because I was using the tree line as cover. That was as close as I wanted to get. You could say that my heart was beating out of my chest. It was like I had buck fever. Well, now that I was within good sight of the creature, it was easy to see what it was. It finally stood up, and I didn't know up until that point how big it really was. Now, I have a roommate who is six foot seven, and this creature would have easily stood over him. At the best guess, I would have to say that it was seven feet six inches tall and it had to weigh over 400 pounds. It finally turned to me and made me out in a second, but when it turned, it didn't run away instantly. It just stood there. I guess it was trying to see what I was. We must have looked at each other for 10 seconds or so, but it felt like 10 minutes, and in that time, all I could see was the creature had dark reddish-brown hair, and the arms hung easily down to the creature's knees. But within an instant, something spooked it, the creature turned and looked down the river, and it just took off. Now the ground that this thing covered was amazing. I didn't move for a good bit, because I was in shock. After the creature had left, I did the same once I could get my feet working again. On the evening of January 22, 2005, S.Y. called me, Richard Hucklebridge, 
and we went over his second visual encounter, which occurred in close proximity to his short road encounter that took place in April. S.Y. first thought that this might be a fisherman crouched on a rocky stream bed, and he thought that he would just amble on over and ask him a few questions about how to fish this area. As he got closer, he noticed it was mostly just one color, and he then thought it might be a bear. Then it stood up and looked at him, and that's when it hit him that this was the same kind of animal that had walked in front of his vehicle in April. This sighting made him a little sick to his stomach, froze him in his tracks, and this time it really shook him up. They sized each other up for what seemed like a very long time, but it was only a few seconds. The animal then turned its head to look downstream. S.Y. thought it might have been a boat coming downstream, and it made its 50-yard dash into the wooded area along the river and out of sight. Per S.Y., it took less than three seconds to make that move. The witness said that this creature was very large, seven feet or so with dark reddish-brown hair all over its body, and had to weigh over 400 pounds. He couldn't give specific characteristics of the face due to the distance. S.Y. noticed that the legs had large quads and were short for its height, but the torso seemed much longer than a person who might have been that tall. The arms seemed longer than a person and much more muscular. He couldn't tell if it was male or female, but he didn't see any breasts on its chest. What S.Y. wanted to convey to everyone is the speed that this creature can move, which is about twice as fast as our best athletes. When the creature reached the woods, S.Y. dropped his fishing pole and took off towards his vehicle, and then took off for home. Note, S.Y. and his friend came back to the same location in July of 2003, and they retrieved his fishing pole, which was where he had dropped it in May. Summary S.Y. told me a very credible story, and I believe he had seen his second Sasquatch. What I do find hard to believe is that S.Y. saw a creature twice, and to me, that's like winning the lotto twice. He doesn't quite see it that way because he's still very troubled by these sightings. The witness is now out to prove these creatures are really out there and has purchased some good equipment to do so. He's going back up there in the spring and he really would like to talk with someone who has seen one of these animals. On this outing, S.Y. still didn't have a camera in his possession and he didn't check the area for footprints because he was really too shook up to look this time. September 15th, 2012. A man and his girlfriend were riding around looking at property in the Shaver Lake area when they decided to pull over and break out sandwiches at the dead end of Dora Bella Road. He looked up as the woman with him cried out, Look! Look! and saw a very strange sight. Heading back into the far side of the trees was a man in a furry costume. He didn't report it because he thought it was a joke until he read this page and decided to report it as a possible Bigfoot sighting. In hindsight, the witness said what he thought was a man in a costume was much too tall to be a joke. This was about 12.30 on Saturday afternoon. We were parked, eating chicken sandwiches, and sharing a Diet Pepsi when this happened. My lady friend didn't think it was a costume, but some kind of creature, because the furry part was reddish and long fur down its back and not like a hooded costume. If this was a Bigfoot the couple saw, it brings the total sighting around Shaver Lake to five in 2012. In 1998, a cabin owner near Shaver Lake, California, reported hearing a pack of coyotes yipping and chirping away at something. Walking over to his window, he saw a Bigfoot carrying some kind of large feathered bird in his hand walking up the road toward his place on Sweetgrass Road, the coyotes were jumping around trying to bite whatever it was the creature was carrying. He called to his wife and son, and they also saw it as it walked off through the trees down a dirt trail, which was later paved. R.C. 1998 October 21, 2005 Cow Meadow, north of Shaver Lake I walked across the road from my campsite and started to walk along a ridge. I was hunting for deer. I was heading east toward Brown Cone. I was going to drop off the ridge south and turn west back toward the camp and hopefully kick up some buck. I was with two other hunters who were back at camp. I was by myself walking along the ridge east toward Brown Cone. It was a cool morning but soon heated up as the sun traveled higher in the sky. After about one hour, I cut into the woods to the south and to my right. 
It was very thick here and took quite some time traveling through. I was making a lot of noise. I'm sure if there were any animals, they were very much aware of my presence. After it seemed like an hour of bushwhacking, I came upon a small fire break, dirt road, not used in quite some time. This road was on my left, traveling north and south. I was just off the road onto the right. I stopped to take a break and to take off some of the layers of clothing I had on. I leaned my gun up against a tree along with my rucksack. I sat down, leaning up on the tree. I was looking north, just enjoying the quietness and taking a breather. Now directly in front of me were some fairly thin bushes. The fire break was on my left. Anything coming across the road I would see very clearly. I was drinking some water and eating some nibs, peanut butter crackers, for about 20 minutes. I decided to get up and move on. After I had my rucksack on and stood up, I grabbed my rifle. At that time, a tall dark figure moved directly in front of me from left to right. There were thin bushes in front of me. I did not see anything come across the road. Whatever it was, had to be standing there watching me for 20 minutes. I quickly got up and ran around the bushes to the right. I stopped and looked and observed three large cinnamon brown colored humanoid figures moving quickly through eight to ten foot spruce trees. The trees were swaying back and forth as they ran through. This all happened in less than a minute. These large hairy figures were walking upright on two legs with their backsides toward me. I did not see their faces or front of their bodies. They were all above eight foot tall, with shoulders about four foot across. I did not notice any necks with their wide bodies. I did not see their bodies long enough to see any muscle movement. I have seen a lot of bears before, and these were no bears. I stood there for about ten minutes, trying to figure out what I had just observed. I looked at the area they traveled through for footprints. The ground was very hard packed, so there were none. I just found the grass on the ground trampled on where the creatures moved through. I did not see anything further like this the rest of the day. August 2014, near Grant Grove. My wife and I were driving at about 9.30 p.m. between Grant Grove and Cherry Gap on Highway 180. When we came around a corner and our headlights lit up the straightaway and next corner about 100 yards away. At the next corner, we saw a large hairy figure walking upright as it stepped onto the road at an angle towards us, and it took large strides and crossed the road and went down the embankment. It was very tall with dark hair. Investigator Bob Collier conducted an interview with the witness by telephone. The witness is 50 years old, where he is employed as a building inspector and lives locally in the central California area. He's also an avid outdoorsman and hunter. The witness stated in July 2014, at approximately 9.30 in the evening, he and his wife were driving to Hume Lake, California, to meet some friends for an overnight trip. The witness was driving a four-door Saturn compact vehicle, where his wife was seated in the front passenger seat. The witness and his wife were driving on the two-lane Mountain Highway 180, near Cherry Gap. As they turned on a right-hand corner area of the highway, the vehicle headlights illuminated two figures walking down the right-hand hillside approaching the highway. The witness stated the figures were approximately 100 to 150 yards ahead of them. This observation of the figures caused the witness to slow his vehicle because he did not expect to see anyone on the road at this time of night. The witness stated he observed the first figure to be very large and walking on two feet, followed by a shorter figure also walking upright on two feet. The witness estimated the shorter figure to be approximately four to five feet tall, with light color hair covering its entire body. The witness described the short figure to have a shorter leg stride, where it was trying to keep up with the larger figure who was walking in front of it. The witness stated the larger figure was approximately eight feet tall, and its body was covered with hair as well. The witness observed the large figure to have long arms, which swung from front to back as it walked. The witness stated his observation of both figures lasted for approximately three to four seconds, where they both walked to the other side of the road and down the embankment. The witness stated the figures walked down into an area called Millwood Flats. The witness has hunted this area in the past, and he said the entire area is dense forest. The witness also stated the figures he and his wife saw were not bears walking across the road. 
He stated the legs and arms were too long and the stride was very human-like in comparison, but much longer. I asked the witness if there were any pedestrian traffic on Highway 180 during this time, and he said there was not. The witness emphasized this part of the highway was considered a mountain road, and he has never seen anyone walking out on this highway at night. The witness further states he believes the two figures were not people, because the figures did not have flashlights or headlamps, and both again were covered in hair. October 25, 2001 Sample Meadow near Huntington Lake. I was hunting at Sample Meadow above Huntington Lake. I had just walked through a marshy area and had gotten into some dense pine trees when I spooked two deer up, and I got a glimpse of them as they ran through the trees. I stopped and was motionless for a couple of minutes when I heard a loud expulsion of air and a branch snapped behind me in the thick pine trees. I had never heard anything like that before, so I froze and did not move. And about one minute later, I heard the same sound from a little farther away. And the next time I heard it, it was closer and to the north. This happened about six times. Each time it was in a different location, like it was trying to see what I was and scare me off. The last time I heard it, it sounded like it was right behind me and I flinched. Then it must have seen me. I heard it running away from me through the trees, making the same noise and breaking limbs as it was running off. I stood in the same spot for about five minutes and did not hear it again. I walked out of the woods to my truck where my dad was waiting for me and we drove about a mile down the road to a campsite to eat lunch. At lunch, I told my dad what happened and described the noises and he thought it might have been a buck grunting. It sounded good to me since I never heard a buck grunt. So we decided that the buck might come back to that spot. So we ate lunch and drove back to the same spot. We hiked in, and at the marshy part, I told him to go in the direction that the deer ran to, and I would try to spook them again. I waited for him to get out of sight, and then I walked toward the pine trees. I got to the trees, when I seen three does running in my direction toward the grove of trees in front of me. Just before they got to the trees, I heard the same noise again, the expulsion of air and a branch break. It spooked the deer. Two of them ran downhill, and the last one ran uphill right at me. It stopped within 10 feet of me, but it never seen me. It was too frazzled by what it saw. It stopped, slowly turned around, and tried to see around the tree to what had spooked it. It stood there for about one minute, oblivious to me. It then slowly turned around and started walking right at me. It got within five feet of me, then I flinched my arm so it would see me before it walked right into me. I startled it so bad the deer fell down on its side, did a spin on the ground, and jumped up and ran the other way. When it got around the trees and down about 20 yards, I heard that noise again. The deer ran down into the south, and I seen it stop about 150 yards away through a clearing. It would look at me, then it would look at where the noise came from. It looked back and forth several times, then it slowly walked away. I then followed where the deer had ran to see what was making that noise. I walked very slowly, came around the trees, and about 30 yards down the tree line, I saw a large figure with black hair sitting under a large pine tree sunning. It had large shoulders, four to six inch hair, but you could still see the muscular definition of its chest and shoulders. There was a fallen tree blocking my view below its waistline. But we locked eyes and stared at each other motionless. It had dark eyes. I could not see any white. I could see the hair on its head blowing slightly in the breeze. I didn't see any facial hair, just a very dark skin face, like an ape. After looking at each other for about a minute, I wanted to get closer, but the fallen tree was in my way, so I took a step to my left to go around, and when I got out of its sight, I heard it get up and bound through the trees, making the same noise as it ran away from me, the loud expulsion of air and breaking branches as it ran off. I went back to the same general area one year later with my two kids, and found about four large footprints in the dirt. You could make out the ridges of fingerprints. It had a four-foot gait. I have a hair sample from a different situation. I found a mountain bike deep in the woods, torn up by something, teeth marks on the seat and bicycle helmet. I saw a large impression that could have been a footprint. There were three witnesses. The following details can be added to the report. The witness is a regular hunter. 
The witness saw the creature from about 30 yards, and they stared at each other for several minutes. The witness got a good look at the creature from the waist up. The creature had large shoulders and large arms. It was covered in long black hair. Its head was round and its face flat. There was no hair on the face from the lips up. The face was leathery and ape-like, and the skin was black. Its eyes were very dark. There was no smell of any kind. After the creature left, the witness went to the area where the creature was sitting and sat in the same location, trying to get a better feel for what the creature had been doing. After a few minutes, the witness then followed the creature a ways into the forest, but it got too thick, so he left. The witness and his dad were supposed to stay the night that evening, but after the event, they decided to go home. Hair sample is from Kings Canyon, Hume Lake area, and the witness is mailing it to me. I will update the report after the analysis is completed. No update on hair as of this date, July 11, 2021. December 1997, near Huntington Lake. I was sitting here listening to Coast to Coast AM and thought I'd tell you about an incident that happened in December of 1997. The location was in the Sierra Nevada mountains, about 10 miles above Huntington Lake, which is about 60 miles above Fresno in central California. Myself and a friend were four-wheeling on light, snow-covered roads at about 2 a.m. We came around a corner, and we both saw something run across the road. It had very long, shaggy red hair and was running on all fours, something like a gorilla would when charging. We only observed it cross the road when we apparently spooked it. We are both outdoorsmen and have seen bears and the like before. When it happened, we both simultaneously looked at each other and said, What the hell was that? And then said, We better not tell anyone, or they'll think we're crazy. I can't swear to what it was, but I'll swear it wasn't a bear. The thing was the wrong color to be any kind of cat, and it was too thin through the torso as compared to its overall size to be a bear, and I suspect bears would have already been in hibernation. The hair looked like it could have been 18 inches long, very shaggy. Its body shape was like a giant human, not a cat or bear. Unfortunately, the animal never turned its face towards us at all. The following details can be added to the report. The sighting occurred in an area surrounded by the Dinky and John Muir Wilderness in the Sierra National Forest. Clarification on the animal being on all fours. It appeared to the witness that it had been squatting in the middle of the road, and as the vehicle approached and caught it in the headlights, it took several steps forward, then started to straighten up to a standing position, on two feet, before it moved out of the light and on the other side of the road. Estimated weight is 500 plus pounds, but the creature was muscular rather than fat. The creature was three and a half feet tall bent over, so standing, it was estimated to be around seven feet tall. The creature's body, as it was bent over, was estimated to be three and a half feet long, from head to rear, and ten and a half inches thick, the side profile of the chest. Its shoulders and arms were very massive and muscular, but the torso was narrow. The hair was the color of an Irish setter, red, and it was 12 to 18 inches in length. No neck was apparent. It appeared that the head was just sitting on its shoulders. It moved very quickly across the road, very unlike a bear or other known animal. October 29, 1995, Mono Creek Campground. Here's my account of what I remember. Fresno, California, 1995, Mono Creek Campground, about 12 or 14 miles above Lake Huntington in the Sierras. Myself, my fishing partner, and another gentleman were all fishing a small part of the river there. It was the last weekend of the season before they closed the roads due to snow. About three miles down the river, my partner decided he had enough and stopped to nap. This other gentleman and myself pushed on, maybe three quarters of a mile from where we had left my friend. I stopped to fish a pool. The other guy dropped down to the next pool to fish it. That's how we were working the different areas. As I was fishing my little stretch, I noticed the guy coming back up. He looked very excited and was waving for me to come there. I figured he landed a good fish or had seen a bear. He was almost in a frenzy. He just told me to hurry. When I caught up to him, he was looking over the edge of the next little drop-off. I looked over and saw nothing unusual. He said it was right there, 
and jumped his way down to the spot. I followed him, asking him what he had seen. Before I could even get the words out of my mouth, this smell, I can't explain to you what it was. Wet, moldy, animal musk filled the air. Nothing I have ever smelled was like this. My friend then told me that he had seen it. Again, before I could even ask, above us, I saw it. There standing, no more than I would say 25 yards up the hill, was a creature I believed to be a Bigfoot, about eight foot tall, covered in reddish brown and somewhat black hair. The face, I remember it looking almost humanoid in appearance. It then turned and began taking huge strides up the mountain, not running, but covering some serious ground on two feet, not four. I tried to follow it, but again I felt this almost hypnotic sensation take over me, and my partner later told me he felt the same way, and I couldn't move. We watched it go right up to the top and over it. I felt very overwhelmed and did not say anything to my friend. We just walked in a silence back to our other friend. He could tell we were shooken up, but never let him in on what just occurred. To this day, whenever I think about it, I get overwhelmed with emotion. When I got home, I called the other gentleman and talked to him about what we had seen. The feelings we went through were basically the same. When he saw the creature, he said he could smell the smell I described, but not nearly as bad as when we came down to where it had been standing. Then a strange feeling overtook him as well, almost like we were hypnotized or drugged. He has trouble now remembering what it looked like. He can remember seeing it and the smell, but all other memories are fading. I can tell you I will never forget what it looked like, and have come to my own conclusions. I believe the smell the Bigfoot emits can be used as a sort of defense system. Let me explain. I believe when excited or scared, the aroma he emits can actually work on a person's system. Maybe for one, it makes you feel drugged, or for another, it makes you feel hypnotized or just plain scared. The reason I feel this is like I said, to this day when I think about it, I'm overcome with emotion. I hope this might help in some small way, and thank you for your time. I did notice no animals, no sounds, no nothing. I had been saying that a couple of miles into our trip downriver. I always make sure to look for wildlife, and there was none. And up there I always see and hear quite a few things. After the sighting, a very tranquil feeling came over me, like it was going to be just fine, or a weird calmness. Whenever I think about it, I cry or become teary-eyed, overwhelmed with emotion. The following details can be added to this report. Nearest road was Forest Service Road 80, Kaiser Pass Road. The campground is actually called Mono Springs Campground. Nearest water is the San Joaquin River. Height estimated at 7 foot 10 to 8 feet tall. Weight estimated at 500 pounds. Hair on face was graying, and footprint measured 17 and a quarter inches in length and 2 inches deep. June 1991, San Joaquin River. My story occurred around 1991 on the San Joaquin River in what would be the northeastern part of town, actually in Fresno. The area is mostly farmland and some sparse woods and vineyards. Nothing like foresty, though. Myself, my cousin, and a friend had decided to go late-night fishing at a little area on the river where the river sort of pools. There's a bridge there. It was late, and we were sitting there and fishing, when we heard something making noise and looked back and saw a coyote running across the bridge heading north. The coyote kept looking back as it ran, as if it was frightened. The coyote looked at us, but it was clearly focused on something behind it, and it was scared. We thought at the time that that was odd. We then heard what we thought was a splash, as if someone had dove into the water behind us. It was dark, so we just glanced back, but of course saw nothing. We probably sat for about 10 minutes or so, when suddenly there was a huge gush and splash, about 25 yards away in front of us. We stopped fishing, and then tried looking into the darkness. The small boulder throwing continued at least two more times, before we actually saw a dark figure, about 40 yards away, standing what looked about waist-high in the river. There was a full moon, so it wasn't too dark to see that it was a pretty big creature. By this time, we were starting to get scared and were pretty much frozen place, and had begun to yell at it, thinking that it could be a person. 
This prompted my friend to yell threats of violence, as young people are sometimes prone to do. This creature basically turned its whole body to the right of it and grabbed another boulder, and with both hands over its head, it threw it at us. This one landed about 15 yards away. It made no sound or noise, only threw small boulders. It threw about two more boulders, the last landing about five yards from us, enough to splash water on our faces. By this time, we had reeled in our lines and were getting out of there as fast as we could. We ran all the way back to the car, which was through some trees, across a field, and up a hill. We went back the next day to the area, and on rafts, floated to the area where the creature had stood. My friend is about six foot tall and jumped in the water to see how deep it was. The water came to his shoulders. There's no way this was a man. We even saw some of the boulders that had been thrown at the bottom of the water, as it wasn't more than five and a half feet deep. There was a sandbar, and the boulders were at least 30 to 40 pounds. Thanks for listening. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at BigfootCaseFiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.